glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, another beautiful day in God's presence. <laughs> it ain't beautiful without his presence. Glory. Is everybody blessed and highly flavored? Did you get it? Do you got it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Awesome. What an awesome God we serve. <sighs> Psalm 62, please. Thank you, Master. Is everybody there? Praise God. Let's speak it together. Verse 1. Truly my soul silently waits for God. From Him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be be greatly moved. How long will you attack a man? Will you, you shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. They alone consult to cast him down from his high position. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Verse 5. My soul Wait silently for God alone. For my what? Expectation is from who? Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him when you feel like it. At all times. Trust in him when? All times. See, that's where you feed on his faithfulness. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Hmm. These are divine expectations. He said, my expectation is from him. That's called a divine expectation. It is true. In other words, there are false expectations and there are true expectations. False expectations are lies, deception. A true expectation comes from God. Some expectations are strong. Some of them are weak. Amen? But when you think about what is an expectation, it's a believing in something is going to happen. That's an expectation. It's believing that something is going to happen. But there is a divine expectation that comes from God, and there is a human expectation. Amen? <laughs> you know, especially when you order something online, you're expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> to get there on time. Many people are on high expectations for their package. <laughs> they run to the door. Is he here yet? <laughs> and then you hope it comes undamaged, which could be a false expectation in itself. Oh, happy days. In Psalm 19. <laughs> I 
glory. Psalm 19. <laughs> it's amazing how Amazon fulfills many people's expectations. <laughs> Verse 12, and Facebook brings a lot of disappointed expectations because it's called flesh book. Anything from the flesh is not a divine expectation. <laughs> In Psalm 19, verse 12, who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from what? Presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Presumptuous sins, doing something without the right or permission. Everybody get it? It's a place where a person fa is failure to observe the limits or boundaries permitted. That's where people fall into assumption. Assuming is very dangerous. Many people assume, in other words, they go beyond the expect uh, on the boundaries. And put a request in for an expectation and expect to get it. See, high expectations can bring great disappointments. This is where the enemy loves to play. This is his playground. Because see, in, in this, an expectation is a place of fulfillment of desire. Amen? Amen? And, and so, in this, I mean, you may plant uh, something, you know, you plant a seed, you water it, and your water it begins to grow, grow, man, it begins to look good, and you're like, look at it, this is cool, man, the next thing you know, a bird ate it. Or the bugs ate it. Or a flood came in, and <laughs> And you might even anointed it and offered it up to God, you know. Lord, let this plant be in glory to your name. <laughs> what happened? So my daughter used to say, what happened? When she was a kid. But again, we can't allow these expectations of ours to bring great disappointments. We must maintain an area of connection of trust no matter what's going on. I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of expectations going around that are not true. They're false and they're lies. We want a divine expectation to be released. And we're going to talk more about that here in a second. Why? Because we do not want to fall in presumptuous sin. Proverbs 11. One of the things the enemy loves to do in this area is to get you into a place where the expectation is not fulfilled and there's disappointment. But there's another place that's beyond disappointment. It's called rejection. And when so many times people will think God has rejected them or something, why didn't you allow this to happen, Lord? Is there something I've done wrong? Maybe. But the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? So in this, we cannot allow rejection because rejection will also lead to bitterness. And now you've opened yourself up to more of the enemy's voice. And things begin to pile up until you just erupt. And then you fall into the flesh completely. And Proverbs 11 and verse 1, let's speak it. 
It says, dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. Now, what does wisdom tell you what to do, right? It tells you what to do. The integrity of the upright will guide him. But the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy him. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath. But righteousness does what? Delivers from death. The righteous of the humble will direct his way aright. But the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The righteous of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught by their what? Their lust. Hmm. Does everybody see it? Cool. All right, so righteousness will guide a person. When a per play, person is in a righteous, right standing with God, he's walking in wisdom. Wisdom tells him what to do. Amen. And understanding tells them how to do it. Go to uh, verse 23. What does it say? The desire of the righteous is only good. But the expectation of the wicked, the wrath, is what? Wrath. Wow. Now, do they know that that's what's coming? No. But God knows. See, you and I as a as the body and as the mind of Christ know more than the world knows. We know more than the world knows. And so in that, it puts in a, you and I into a place of more accountability and responsibility. Amen? So it says righteousness will guide, but an expectation, which is a desire... You know, expectations are actually hope in the future, which is called faith. Hope in the future is called faith. So when it's a divine expectation, you don't have to manipulate anything to have it fulfilled. Does everybody get it? When it's a divine expectation, you're to take your hands off and trust God. Because he said, trust him all the time. No matter what it is. The promises of God are for everyone. Amen. That walks in an upright condition. And in this, there is an expectation that you and I carry. In other words, we expect to be healed. We expect certain things. But in this, our trust is still in the Lord. Even if it hasn't come yet, we know it's coming. Now, everybody gets healed. Everybody. You get healed when you go home, or you get healed here. So you're going to get healed. Doesn't matter. And when you go home, you don't even care. Hallelujah. And for 2 Peter chapter 1. See, because we know the end. I mean, because we know the end, we should not be moved. Oh, happy days. Second PD. Verse 1. Second Peter chapter one, sorry. Glory to God. Second Pete chapter one. Let's go there. Verse two. We've heard this before. Let's speak it. There's a reason for this now. Are you ready? Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? The knowledge of God. In other words, knowing him. You know him more by hanging out with him. Now you can read about him, amen, which brings knowledge. But that place is to always bring you to a place of relationship. His presence is the most important thing. Because there's a lot of people that know the word, but can't fulfill it. They can't walk it. 
because they don't have the presence of God. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And his divine power having given to us all things, all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in a world through lust. Now this is very powerful because I really believe the Lord is trying to express to us more and more about the divine nature. To be partakers of the divine nature. See, there's a place where you partake of it because it's always there. You know, one of the things the Lord was showing me today was he said, too many people are still eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, not the tree of life. And without eating of the tree of life, the divine nature can't maintain its position. The divine nature releases divine expectations. I'm going to say it again. It is the divine nature that releases divine expectations. Why? Because the divine nature is governed by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say that again. It is the divine nature that releases divine expectations because the divine nature is governed by the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. What is it not of divine nature, of human nature? Amen? If it's not of the divine nature, then it's of the human nature. And we want the things of the divine nature to release divine expectations. When our divine expectations, again, it's worked by heaven, not by you. The only thing that we're to do is meet God wherever he wants us to. Romans 8. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 18. What's in your package today? <laughs> they were all wrapped with like, uh, they almost look like Christmas gifts. Had red wrapping on it, and some kind of design which I couldn't see. I can tell you they were not Santa Clauses on them. Or snowmen or anything like that. <laughs> they had a bow on it. Just small packages. Just falling on people. Hallelujah. So if you felt a funk, pick it up. Romans 8, verse 18. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And don't steal your neighbor's package. Because <laughs> it won't open up. You don't have the key to open that package. Every package is associated with an individual's key. Hallelujah. No peeking. Eighteen. Is everybody there? For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. For the earnest, that means sincere, earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. So even creation has an expectation. 
And you know what the gift is? Us. We're the gift. <laughs> Hallelujah. For verse 24, creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope, for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance, which is also known as endurance. Earnest expectations of God's creation, divine expectation, will come to pass. It always comes to pass. As long as you don't fall from the divine nature. See, the moment you stop partaking of the divine nature, everything ceases. Everything's on hold. Because the divine nature moves with the divine once the divine nature is no longer, once a person is not partaking in the divine nature, everything is on hold. Why? Because the human nature is now taken over. Remember, we have the power to choose. Hallelujah. Now, the divine expectations will come to pass. Amen. It affects the, the kingdom of Christ. It affects the divine kingdom. It supports his purposes of his plan. Everything's associated with it. Your expectations are to support the kingdom. It's some way or another, it's the fulfilling of your destiny also. In Philippians 1. Oh, hallelujah. One of the things that uh, I had a discussion with the Lord about a couple things, and one of the things he said is to be careful that you discern aligning your expectations with his. And he said one of the things that will assist, he says, exchange your expectations for mine. It goes back to the exchange. Philippians chapter 1, verse 19. Let's speak it. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and hope that it, in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be manif manified, magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is what? Gain. But if I live on in the carnal, amen, if I live on in the physical, I don't like to use the flesh here, because then it makes somebody think that it's, it's in the area of corruption. Because it's not. He's talking about even living in the area of the physical. Which we know is corrupt anyways. Amen. This will mean fruit from my labor. Yet what shall I choose? I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two. Having a desire to depart and be with Christ. Which is far better. Nevertheless to remain in the physical is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all your, prayer, all your progress and joy of faith, that your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. And then he says, he says, look, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come 
and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation, and that is from God. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to, to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here is in me. His expectation was released by the divine nature governed by the Holy Spirit. Everything Paul talked about was an expectation by the divine, released by the divine nature. Revelations are also released by the divine nature. Does everybody get it? Again, we've got to get more of an understanding about the divine nature. That's why he said partake, partake, partake of the divine nature. The divine nature carries all the wisdom. Carries all the knowledge. Because the divine nature is Christ himself. Amen? And we're to partake of this divine nature. And it's the divine nature that releases. He releases on our behalf as the children of God Almighty. So that we can fulfill his purpose and his will for expanding the kingdom and to be a sign and wonder of prosperity to the world. It's not a very good sign and wonder to be poor and to be in the kingdom. Does everybody understand that? God did not call us to be poor. He said be poor in spirit. Amen? That means humble. But he wants his children to prosper. When I see people begging on the street, and if I stop and they call themselves Christians, it's because the enemies come to steal, kill, and destroy. And they've either been deceived or manipulated and not in divine order. Does everybody get it? We, we're not to be beggars. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with begging with God for something. Amen? Because sometimes he wants to see how humble we'll get. But we don't need to be beggars. He's faithful to complete what he started, but he wants to raise our faith to a level, amen, to receive and believe with an expectation released by the divine nature, not by the human nature. Glory. Psalm 40. You know, the word says, we read it just a minute ago, pour out your heart to him. Hallelujah. Psalm 40, verse 1. I waited patiently. It didn't say anxiously. Patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me, and he heard my cry. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon the rock of salvation, the anointing. The rock is the anointing. And established my steps. He's put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it in fear or reverence the Lord, and they will put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man who makes the Lord his what? Trust. And does not respect the proud, nor such as to turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts toward us cannot be re recounted to you in order. 
if I would declare and speak of them, there are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. In your word, in your law, is within my heart. I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. Indeed, I do not restrain my mouth of telling the goodness of you. But we need to restrain our mouth of all the other stuff. O oh Lord, you yourself know, I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. He said he waited patiently. He endured. What was he doing? He was enduring, waiting for what? The expectation of the move of God. We will never reach the level of faith to, defil to fulfill a divine expectation without becoming a living epistle. Again, I'm going to say that again. We will never reach the level of faith to fulfill a divine expectation without becoming a living epistle of the Word and the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, again, it goes back to that area. If you're not living, in the, living out of the Word, these expectations will not be fulfilled. Why? Because they will be stolen. I want to re reiterate, unreachable expectations bring great disappointments. Why? Because it's according to, the, according to the carnal mind, not according to the mind of the Spirit. But in the Spirit, through the divine nature, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. 1 John chapter 3. So yesterday we were out playing tennis and I took off my watch and came home, and I said, man, I, I think I left my watch at the tennis course. I was looking in my bag and so forth, and man, I got so many watches, and so I opened a drawer of watches. I had an expectation that one would be working. <laughs> and I'm pulling through and looking at the dead, 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 dead. I found a watch. It says Trump 2020. <laughs> it was the only one still working. <laughs> what an expectation. <laughs> Keep America great. <laughs> I'd say God favors America <laughs> and this president. <laughs> it's the only one still working. Praise God. <laughs> and verse 1. Let's speak it. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it does not know him, and nor does it understand, do they understand us. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself. What an expectation of purification. He purifies himself because his hope is in him. Just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no what? There's no sin. Verse 6. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Why? If you're abiding in the divine nature, you're not going to sin. It doesn't mean you won't be tempted. It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. But you will have no fellowship with darkness. Hallelujah. Whoever, uh, whoever abides in him doesn't sin. 
whoever sins has neither seen him or what? Known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. Again, here's that word practice. Doesn't mean we we're perfect or we made it. We make mistakes, but we go back to practicing righteousness. In other words, that's associated with choices. Are you choosing the righteous choice? Amen. Verse 8 He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning, and for this purpose the Son of God was manifested. <laughs> he was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So the anointing was manifested to destroy the works of the devil and to leave the divine nature behind, governed by the Spirit of God. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin. That's pretty amazing. He cannot sin. Because he has been born of God. Now again, to be born again is a position. It's a state of being. It's associated with the tabernacle of God. What place you are living in the tabernacle depends where you are at. If you're living in the outer court, you're easy to fall out. You live in the holy place, you have a choice. You live in the most holy place, the enemy can't touch you. Amen? Glory to God. Is everybody okay? Verse 10, in this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life. And you know what? They don't know that. They live for today because they have no future expectation. Their future expectation is a business Family, children, prosperity. Does everybody understand that? It isn't be off planet. It's on planet. Well, your expectations are from off planet to here. There's a difference. That's why they don't understand us. And there are many people who are not going to understand you. There are many Christians who still don't get it. Again, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. At eternal life, we're abiding in him. Abiding in him. That means the divine nature is no longer able to be partaken. Now, you got to look again. Where's the divine nature? It's the tree of life. The human nature is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And there are people still partaking of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, not the tree of life. The children of God living in the Spirit, expressing the divine nature with the divine expectations of eternal purpose. They're holding fast to their promises and to all expectations of the divine counsel are fulfilled. Assisting in all divine expectations led by the Spirit of God. Why? Because you and I are partakers of the divine nature. When all partaking in the divine nature, nothing is fulfilled according to God. Only human aspects and expectations are. Matthew 6. Glory. Matthew chapter 6. Is everybody okay? Cool. You know, we are reaching in this place that we're about to enter, and it's already beginning to trinkle of another area or era, and 
season and the increase of God's presence and power and love and where there will be a, more of a separation because you'll be get, it's, it's getting tighter and tighter to where you'll begin to walk away from those who are not walking or are partaking of the divine nature. You begin, because there, it's, if it doesn't promote the divine will of God, we don't want anything to do with it. Amen? Does everybody, I mean, we're getting closer and closer. Where it's like, you know what? People that you used to associate with, you don't anymore. I get texts from people and whatever, and it's like, man, I, I don't even. Are you having service tonight? Well, you idiot, you know better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what did the Lord tell you? you know? But I mean, just, you know, we, 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 haven't, we haven't changed anything in the last how many years, you know? <laughs> Just because you, because at least so many people have been out of connection and out of assembly. Hallelujah. Anyways, Matthew six, verse thirty-one. Verse thirty-one. Were you carnal nature humanite? <clears throat> Let's speak it. Therefore, do not what worry. I think that's some people's middle name. Something worry, whatever. <laughs> Saying, what shall we what? Eat. What's for dinner? <laughs> what do you want for dinner? Who cares? <laughs> Thaw out the whole freezer. <laughs> Glory to God. I know I'd get a spark out of my wife. That's why I had to say that. <laughs> Therefore, do not worry, little lady. <laughs> Saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Hmm. It says, don't worry. Amen? Don't worry, ladies. Don't worry what you, you know what I'm saying? Just do it. <laughs> if you're waiting for an answer from your husband, just do it. <laughs> but make sure it's by the divine. <laughs> It better be divine backing. <laughs> See, if it's not divine backing, you ain't got, if it's divine backing, you got nothing to worry about it. Because then you can say the Lord told you. But you better make sure it was the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. And husbands too now, okay? It's just not the ladies. Whew. Hallelujah. Do we drive together? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love my wife. <laughs> Verse 32. <laughs> all these things <laughs> the Gentiles seek. See? That's human nature. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the what? Kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. So we see here that seeking, we need to Step out of the humanity. Step out of the physical understanding. Step out of the human nature into the divine nature to release the promises of divine expectations. Amen? But he says, first seek the kingdom of God. Why? Because what is it that you want to release? 
See, by staying connected to divine nature, you're able to partake with. Romans 13. Verse 11. Everybody okay? Glory to God. Mm. <laughs> Woo, verse 10. Love does no harm <laughs> to a neighbor. <laughs> Therefore, love is fulfilled, is a fulfillment of the law or of the what? Word. And do this knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the divine nature, and make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill its lust. And I'm going to close the first John chapter 2. Put on the divine nature. That means partake of it. Put on the uh, Christ. First John chapter 2. Hallelujah. First John chapter 2. Verse... Uh, 27. Oh, no, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Verse 25. Let's speak. And this is a promise that he has promised us eternal life. That's a good expectation. Amen. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. Now, again, that is the divine nature. And you do not need that anyone teach you if you're a partaker of the divine nature. But as the same anointing teaches you, so who's teaching you? The divine nature of God governed by the Holy Spirit. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it has taught you you will abide in him that means partaking partaking again these are divine expectations that we want to see fulfilled they will come to pass as long as you and I continue in being connected and allowing God to fulfill it that's all we have to do is meet it. Amen? Remember, we must discern what is of a divine nature or human nature. Amen? The human nature expectations always brings trouble. It always brings trouble. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word, and we are honored and blessed. And Lord, we just exchange our human expectations for your divine expectations. That you may establish our steps and thoughts and bring us to the level of faith where we are fulfillers of your word, of your love, and of your expectations of us in this realm, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.